All right, looks like I have another offering from Tin Hai Fi. This is um, the Tin Hai Fi C5. So much like the Gumi Hose from um, Kinira, this is using a planar magnetic driver along with one balanced armature driver. So we got that whole hybrid driver system going on right now. So that being said, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, now as usual, I should note that this was sent out to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're gonna hear here is gonna be my own personal opinion. Also, while we'll be looking at audio file stuff, we're also gonna be, you know, focusing on its performance in games, essentially. So, you know, that's how we do things here. Let's just get started. So here we have the box of the Tin Hi-Fi C5 Space, and if we look inside the box, we're gonna get the IEMs, of course, as well as a cable, a bag full of silicone tips, as well as a bag of foam tips. Now you'll also get a carrying pouch to put everything inside, as well as some paperwork. <laughs> To get a closer look at the cable, it is a very nice braided cable that ends in a metal 3.5mm jack with a metal barrel splitter as well as a bead for a chin slider. And of course at the end are metal 2-pin connectors on ear hooks. Taking a closer look at the IEMs, they're the most roundest tin hi-fi IEMs I've ever seen, looking similar to some blonde IEMs actually. Build-wise, it's pretty simple, but it is made of all metal and on top you're gonna have the 2-pin connectors. If you look at the nozzle, it is one with the body being made of metal with a metal grill and it is also interestingly in oval shape, which is technically for a better fit, but your mileage will vary. For me personally, I found them to be pretty comfortable in my ears as the IEMs themselves aren't very large. They're kind of like medium smallish in terms of their size and they actually have no pressure on any point of my ear, which is nice. Design wise, I do think they should fit most people's ears just fine unless your ears are like really, really small. But for the most part, I think most people should be okay. As for the looks department, they're pretty simple and clean. They're very inoffensive and they kind of blend in, not being too big and just being just very easy to wear. All right, now let's get into the sound of these guys. Now, some of you guys may assume like because of their driver configuration, maybe it's kind of similar to the in the gumi hose in which case kind of but mostly not really the while they do have the same configuration and they do kind of have more of a u-shape ish approach the approach with the c5s is much darker as in it's got a much darker sound profile at the low end at the base we have an overall very clean very present bass it's not like super strong but it's definitely on the stronger side you got a really good deep rumble at the low end with a really good reach in those lower sub bass regions and at the mid bass you still get some punch it's a pretty decent punch to go with it there's like just enough bass. It's, it's good. It's clean. It's not overbearing. There's just the right amount of bass and the quality of that bass is just really, really good. And because of this, it doesn't bleed into the mids, keeping the mids also fairly clean. Now the mids, like the bass, also seem more like on the darker side in terms of like its sound. So I think at the lower mids, it's where it's probably being affected and mixing with the bass very well. Something I should note about the mids, you know, um, I guess overall is that it does come off a bit airy, which has this feeling of space, but it also kind of affects how things sound. So like voices sound a little bit more spacious and breathy, which some people may or may not like. The detail and clarity in the mid range is just enough. It's like it's okay. It's not like analytical levels, but it is just enough to have some detail where it's like, you know, you can like listen in for those little detailings. Definitely kind of smoothened out a little bit, not the most granular detail stuff. So, you know, it's just enough. Now, as for the highs, they don't go like super high. They have a pretty decent reach, but they don't like get to like shrieking, piercing high levels. It never really gets harsh, doesn't really get sibilant. So it is definitely on the safer end of the spectrum. And it does kind of play into this darker or dark ish kind of sound profile. And personally, I prefer darker sounds. That's just kind of how I roll, but that's not necessarily very useful in shooter games, particularly, which um, I'll also get into. But if you know, then you know. But let's move on to like sound stage. Well, actually, before we get into sound stage, let's also talk about like overall like sound quality, you know, just the, the quality of the sound in terms of like how clean and clear and detailed it is for its price. So this thing is definitely running around the $80 range. And um, the sound of it, I would say, is something I would expect out of something that's much more expensive, something with like within the 100 100 to 120 dollar category that's the sound that i'm getting out of these 80 dollars you know iems and this is in accordance to like um, iems in the current space of like 2023 well, early 2023, because um, with IEMs, the quality has been going up and up, and the standards just keep going higher and higher at every price bracket, which is kind of nice. But as of this current moment, I'd say the sound definitely punches above its belt. It sounds like something that should be much more expensive, but we're getting it at 80 bucks, which I think is pretty good. Okay, now, now then, with that being uh, said, let's get into like soundstage and imaging. So with the soundstage i'm actually um i'm actually a fan of it it's quite nice it's fairly spacious in terms of the sound this might be due to the airiness in um the mid-range and it's fairly round so while it is more wide than it is deep it still has some good amount of depth to match that width it's not the biggest soundstage ever in the world but it's still for an im quite spacious and the roundness gives a good 3d like feel to it now this also plays into the height and the height is just okay it's 
it's there, but you know, I usually don't expect a lot of from, you know, height for any IEMs for the most part. But for these ones, I'd say the height is just okay, which is which is good. Now, as for the imaging, it is pretty damn good. It's fairly accurate, honestly, and uses its stage very well. Sound separation on these is pretty good. It's not like super tight. There is definitely some space between all the sounds, not like a crazy amount, but just enough where you can separate the sounds easily and pinpoint where the sounds are coming from, at least in music. In games, it's a bit of a different story. Like, for example, in competitive games, Games, these things are fairly accurate they have good imaging but due to the darkish tuning it makes it kind of hard to listen for like um, footsteps which are typically in like the mid to higher range this dark tuning kind of like sometimes smothers it a little bit especially when things get really busy and when there's a lot of sounds going on especially if it's in the mid to lower range it'll kind of cover up the sounds that you're trying to listen to from like the mids and highs due to the sound just not being very bright you're gonna be using a lot of effort to be tracking for these sounds but when it gets busy it just is a little too difficult to listen for those footsteps especially if you're like you're trying to like position your team together it's um it definitely gets a little bit rough the sound just doesn't have that brightness that you're gonna need to pierce through all the sounds in the midst of like a really busy battle like if things are pretty quiet and you're just kind of walking around your team then you know it's a little bit easier of course but usually in shooter games this is not going to be the case for most of the game sometimes maybe when you're just like trying to survive with your team but if you're like really battle hungry then this whole nother story makes it a bit difficult so while it can be used for competitive shooters i don't know if i, if I would recommend it unless you're playing casually because you know that's just kind of how things go because it still is a pretty enjoyable sound which then you know brings us to like less competitive games in which case i think these things do a really really good job and are excellent for non-competitive games due to just the overall sound being kind of the way it is how that dark tuning and the spacious sound the circular ish almost not really circular but like more rounded soundstage it just presents the world so well in a very immersive manner it just really pulls you in there is a natural naturalness to the sound when you're playing these kinds of games because nothing is too much I mean, there's, there's a lot of bass but the bass doesn't feel like it's too much it just gives more body to the sound and gives more weight to everything it just feels so good for uh, those non-competitive more open world kind of games especially open world kind of games anything that's very atmospheric it just does a fantastic job and that airy mid-range that i mentioned earlier that might be kind of like funny like um when you're listening to music or listening to people actually plays in its benefit in those games to make it once again just more immersive it just overall if you're going to be using these for non-competitive open world stuff this thing is like i wouldn't say perfect but it comes close that said i do think because of all this they are primarily better for those non-competitive kind of situations well and you know if you're playing competitive casually then sure go ahead why not but you know that those are my opinions on them i do think they're better for the non-stuff and i guess they're, they're also pretty good if you're listening for comms and whatnot but even then for competitive use i would use something else non-competitive and enjoyment these things are just really really great but once again take my word to the grain of salt because sound is subjective because if you're someone who doesn't like a darker sound then these might not be for you but if you're someone who plays those type of games the way you know you would with using these you know not not so competitively and you like a dark sound these things might be the ones for use and that's basically what i have for today so if you do want to buy them i have a little link in the description and uh that's pretty much it all i've just all i got today so i guess i'll see you guys next time i do like the sound of these guys once again and uh i, I like the direction we're going with everything so that being said once again see you guys next time